game. I know that Turconovoy is not an ape. He is a very early true human. And so here we have a modern human skull. The faces are very similar to one another, but Turconovoy's skull is a bit more primitive and has a lower forehead and a much smaller brain capacity. Victor will build Turconovoy's face muscle by muscle based on his studies of cadavers and modern anatomy. While his head may be primitive, Turconoboy's skeleton is surprisingly human. His hips are a little wider, his arms a little longer, but his overall body shape is just like ours. Turconoboy and erectus, that's something that if you were to see from 100 feet away, you would think, well, there's a large naked man there, a woman, or, or you know, but it's a human. It will take Victor a week to flesh out Turconoboy's face. Meanwhile, a team of animators is at work creating scenes that will bring Turconoboy and his people to life. To make sure they do it accurately, they have enlisted the help of Harvard anthropologist Dan Lieberman. They had a more forward position of the palms when they ran. Just slightly. There you go. The blue-suited actors are there to create movement references for the artists. In the final animations, they will be replaced by Homo erectus bodies. And action! Their heads and faces based closely on Victor's model. As Turkana Boy's forensically reconstructed head nears completion, a face emerges that looks a lot like us. Now for the first time in a million and a half years, here he is, our ancestor, the Homo erectus called Turkana Boy. But what he looked like is only the beginning of his story. To reconstruct his life, we need to find out how old he was. And if we look at his skeleton, we can see that the growth plates on his limbs that would fuse when he's fully adult are all unfused. So even though he's very tall, we know that he's still growing. The fact that Turkana Boy was not fully grown has turned out to be a boon to researchers. You can answer questions like, did the boy grow up like a modern human? Or did he grow up more like an ape? Turkana Boy was already five feet, three inches tall. When scientists compared his bones and teeth to ours, he seemed to be about 14 years old. But when dental specialist Chris Dean began to study his teeth, he was in for a shock. It turns out that all teeth, fossil or not, preserve a remarkably precise record of childhood. This is a fossil tooth, and we can see the enamel cap, which covers the core of the tooth, which is made of dentine. Uh, dentine is just another word for ivory. And within the enamel, you can see the rods which are running from the enamel dentine junction here out to the surface of the tooth. Enamel has a regular growth pattern like the rings of a tree. Under an electron microscope, it looks like rods made of tiny beads. Each of the little beads along these prisms represent one day's growth because the cells which produce enamel are actually under the influence of a circadian or daily clock. And those uh, secretions during the day speed up and then slow down. And there's a permanent record of that in every tooth. So you can see rods running all the way through this tissue. And every day along the rod, there is a wobble where the tissue slows down and then speeds up. So if you count the beads in these strings, you can figure out exactly how many days that tooth has been growing. When Chris looked at the fossilized teeth of Turkana Boy, he got a huge surprise. Turkana Boy wasn't 14 years old, he was eight. What that implies is that the growth of the Takana boy resembled more closely that of chimpanzees today. 
To be five foot three at age eight, Turkana boy must have grown up very fast, at a rate closer to chimps than us. A chimpanzee's childhood is short. It is sexually mature at about seven. Human childhood is longer. We reach puberty at about 12. So as humans evolved from apes, childhood was extended. But what advantage could be gained by having helpless children around to feed and care for who take so long to grow up? The mystery of prolonged childhood is at the heart of human evolution. It may be related to brain size. We humans have the biggest brains in the animal kingdom in relation to our body size. They're so big that most of our brain growth has to happen outside the womb, or our heads would never get through the birth canal. A long, slow childhood gives our brains time to grow after birth, and time to learn everything we need to function in our complex human societies. That's the advantage of prolonged childhood, for us at least. But what about Turkana boy? His brain was 900 cubic centimeters, smaller than ours, but more than twice as large as a chimp's. So was he on the way to thinking and talking like us? Ralph Holloway believes he was. He's been collecting the brain endocasts of human ancestors for over 30 years. An endocast is a mold taken from the inside of the skull which reveals the shape of the brain. Ralph is particularly interested in something called the Broca's area. Broca's area is involved with memory functions, executive functions, but it does have a very important role to play in the motor aspects of speech. In the brain of Turkana boy, Ralph believes he sees evidence for something remarkable, a change in the Broca's area tied to communication. Broca's caps regions on the Turkana boy are fully modern in terms of their appearance. It is good, solid evidence for the, having the ability of symbolic communication. In other words, language. It's a controversial idea, and we'll never know for sure if Turkana boy could speak. But there are other clues to his intelligence, the stone tools he left behind. Homo erectus made tools like this hand axe here. It's been chipped extensively on both sides. The point enables one to do piercing tasks. The heavy bit here can be used for cracking bone or, or chopping wood. It's a very, very versatile tool and a sharp one. It may not look like much, but the stone hand axe marks the birth of technology. Homo erectus has left us many signs of his inventiveness. Here in central Kenya, Rick Potts has been studying a treasure trove of Homo erectus stone tools. Stone tools represented a momentous change because once you had tools in your hands, all the foods in the world could open up to you. That represented a tremendous survival advantage. Here is a cache of over 500 stone hand axes made by Homo erectus. Just a mile away, Rick visits the quarry where for thousands of years, these ancestors came to shape stone into tools, leaving behind a 